Hi, everyone. Welcome to Emerge Gallery. My name is Robert Langdon. Let me, um, here we go. Okay. Hi, my name is Robert Langdon. Welcome to Emerge Gallery. And uh, today we're going to be taking a look at um, the Tell Me a Story show, which is um, on exhibit at the uh, gallery here in Socrates, and then also um, on artsy.net. Uh, on the Emerge Gallery NY um, shop there on, on, on Artsy. Uh, there's 50 works in, the, uh, in the, the gallery here. And then there's an additional 30 pieces that um, are exclusive to Artsy. Uh, I'm gonna do just a quick little run through here of some of the works that we have um, on the wall. And we're gonna look at each piece individually. We're gonna talk with some of the artists. Um, including the artist uh, Stacy Pritchard, who has a wonderful um, exhibit of some fantastic little creatures here in the window. Mm -hmm. So we'll be taking a look at um, of each of these as well, and Stacy's going to tell us about those. Um, so um, the whole idea of the show is it's it's all very narrative work. So I'm inviting writers to come on in throughout the month, um, either to the gallery or have a look at the, um, the artsy site. The work is, all the work is on there. Connect with a piece of uh, art or two or three or five in some cases. Uh, <clears throat> write a new written word um, inspired by that piece. And then uh, it will be published on the gallery website. Um, and then we're also gonna be doing one of these uh, little Zoom um, events on November 7th where writers can come and read the work that they created inspired by, um, by the art. Uh, right now, there is probably about a dozen responses that I've received so far, and I've been publishing them on the gallery website, MergeGalleryNY.com, um, as they come in. So if you want to see what's being created inspired by some of this work, uh, please have a look. It's some pretty fantastic stuff. Um, I've done this show before. Uh, it is one of my favorites. Um, I'm not a visual artist, but um, I do write, so I do get to participate um, in this exhibit. Um, so let's, uh, let's go ahead and start taking a look at, um, at some of the work. Uh, just bear with me one moment while I get my bearings. Okay. Um, share my screen. This is what we want to look at. Okay, so this is the artsy page and uh, this is the Emerge Gallery site. Um, you will see the current exhibition tell me a story right up front and then you can scroll down and see all of the um, exhibitions that I've done for the last two years. So we're gonna have a look at Tell Me a Story. There's two ways that you can look at the exhibit. You can uh, scroll down and each of the pieces here um, are in the exhibit. You would click on each piece to find out a little more information about that work. Um, or you can go through the viewing room, which will have all of the works right in front of you. Uh, with the multiple views of each of the pieces and any kind of um, text the artist has provided about the work. So all of that is right up front, um, whereas the others you need to click on each individual piece. So it's a, it's a, it's a, a, a very user-friendly way to uh, look at the exhibit. Um, so what we are gonna do is take a look at each piece. We're gonna go alphabetically. Uh, this first piece is, um, this is by uh, Lucinda Abra. Uh, Lucinda, it's called Hari Das. Uh, Lucinda lives in uh, Catskill, New York. This is colored pencil. It's 21 by, 20, uh, 21 by 29. And this is circa 1985. Um, this is actually, this is second, sec, two piece, two, one of two pieces that we've had that are, would come from the 80s. So this is what Lucinda says about Hari Das. Hari Das is a monk who took a vow of silence at 29. He communicated by writing on a chalkboard that hung around his neck. While not much of a follower, I had on occasion visited him at his center in California. 
Yet it was surprising when he appeared in a dream, taking me to a very forlorn location. During this dream, I learned of my daughter's father's suicide. Hours after walking, I was notified by the morgue that he had indeed killed himself mm -hmm. and all the facts learned in slumber were true. Mm. Uh, so that is Lucinda Abra's piece called Hari Das. A little story behind it that may inspire you um, to, um, to tell a story of, of your own. Uh, the next piece that we have is by um, uh, Debbie or Breitpart, I believe is, is the way you pronounce it. I'm probably pronouncing it wrong. If I am, my apologies, Deborah or Debbie. Uh, Debbie lives in Saugerties, New York. Uh, this is called Hygieia. It's acrylic on canvas and it's 11 by 14, painted in 2021. Um, it was done in acrylic after the, it's, it's titled Hygieia after the goddess of healing. And I'm probably pronouncing that as wrong as well. Um, I took some license in portraying her as a child. She's often depicted as an adult with a snake as her symbol. The painting shows her as a child learning her new trade. I was inspired by the recent pandemic and painted her young and innocent, reflecting our naivete in the face of the coronavirus. So that is uh, Debbie's. Joan Barker, uh, this is a fun piece. Uh, Joan, I don't think Joan is here today, no. Uh, this is called Halloween Parade, West Village, New York City. Uh, this is um, an original print from uh, 1980. It's a silver, uh, vintage silver gelatin print. Uh, the, vin the Village Halloween Parade was initiated in 1973 by Greenwich Village puppeteer and mask ma maker Ralph Lee and is the only nighttime parade in New York City. The parade reports to have 50,000 costume participants and 2 million spectators. The photo was made during the parade's second decade. When you look at the photo, what do you think of? Probably a number of associations. For example, the definition of twat, a stupid or annoying person, a woman's genitals, or TWA 800 flight bound from New York to Paris exploding, killing all 230 people on board in 1996, or that the 2020 parade was canceled due to COVID-19. This is a second piece um, by Joan Barker. Uh, this is an exclusive to Artsy, uh, and this one is called When. This is also circa 19, 1980. It's a uh, photography vintage silver gelatin print. A child plays in New York City's Lower East Side surrounded by rubble filled graffiti painted lots in the 1980s. Street photography embodies the spontaneous responses of seeing, curiosity, empathy, engagement, storytelling and reflection. Our vulnerability makes us human. Look back at the 1980s, consider how much and how little has changed. A conversation with the past is hope for the future. In the early 2000s, the gentrification spread to the LES, making it one of the trendiest neighborhoods in Manhattan. Our um, next artist uh, is um, Christine Baum. Christine it's called Clawfoot Tub. Clawfoot Tub, it's oil on paper and it's uh, 10 by 11, created in 2018. A woman is transformed into a swan, but she continues with her domestic routine in her altered body. The woman she once was liked to relax in her clawfoot tub, but swans like to track, to thrash and splash in the water. This is a second piece from, um, from uh, her swans. Uh, this is called Swan Dive. It is oil on paper. A woman is transformed into a swan and slowly accepts this new fate. She dives deep. Uh, there is probably a fairy tale in there or someone um, is looking to, um, to tell one. Uh, next is uh, Ed Berkey's. Ed lives here in uh, Saugerties. And uh, this piece is called Girl in the Yellow Dress. It's watercolor and colored pencil. On paper, it's a uh, 12 by 10 and a half and it was created this year. Okay, um, I'm gonna take a little break and bring up, uh, really happy to bring up uh, Christy Bishop. 
uh, to talk to us about um, about her piece. Uh, Chrissy, did, there you go. You're unmuted. Uh, let's let's get you here. We will. Oh. Okay, great. Well, well, I began my art study in Woodstock, New York, at the summer school, the Art Students League. And in 1973, when I first moved here, and I painted portraits and figures. Now, since then, I really got into landscapes for many, many years. And that's what I've been exhibiting at the Emerge Gallery. I did have, I got cancer in October, oh no, September and October of 2018, and was on opiates for a while and could not paint at all. So as I recovered and got off of them, I was able to start doing abstracts and then it led into, then the pandemic happened and I was gung-ho for painting because I painted morning, noon and night and I painted over 100 paintings during the pandemic in 2020. So this is one of those paintings. And this, uh, I, I think it's really thrilling to hear what others think is going on in a painting. And that's probably a main purpose, but there is a very personal meaning to this. So I would like to write a story about it myself and speak about it on November 7th. So that's it for now. Excellent. Thank you, Christy. It was good seeing you the other day. Thank you. Same about you. Nice. Um, okay, I have a I have a guest here in the gallery, um, Arabelle Colton, who is going to. Oh, let me bring up her work before I, I bring her over. Okay, this is uh, Arabelle's work. It's called Penguin Power. So. Welcome, Arabelle. Thank you. Uh, you know, actually come this yes. way so we're not in the shadow. All right. All right. There you go. Perfect. Okay, good. Um, so, Penguin Power. Um, some years ago, I also was diagnosed with cancer, lymphoma, and a very, very dear friend of mine who died last year, so it's even more meaningful to me. Uh, she gave me this beautiful plush penguin, a uh, big penguin, and uh, to give me penguin power to fight the cancer. And he was a great comfort to me, and I would bring him with me to chemo and to the infusion center, and I would hold him in my arms while I was getting my infusion. And... Uh, he brought me great comfort and strength. And then I began to actually walk around the infusion center with him. His name was Fortis, which is Latin <laughs> strength. That's what we named him. And I would go up to the other patients who were getting their infusions and I would say, do you want penguin power? And <laughs> they said, yes, I would over tap them with his beak. And uh, some people really didn't and others did. And uh, so he means a lot to me. And uh, I have him. And this, this is a iPhone selfie. It's right? an iPhone selfie. Yes. Which is new for you. Yes, it is. I normally uh, work in black and white film. Um, all not digital. Um, I make a I make a dark room in my bathroom, and I process things in the kitchen. But um, so this was something new. Great for, for sharing your story okay. and for a little penguin power. <laughs> right. Thanks, Arabelle. Okay, next we have a uh, work by um, Shelley Davis. This is, uh, this is called Joy Marquis. Uh, let me just, I'm sorry. It's uh, Shelley. It is called uh, Joy Theater Marquis. It's acrylic on canvas, 11 by 14, painted this year. 
Uh, so Shelley, uh, what Shelley says about this piece is um, joy is timeless. We find joy in the obvious as well as the, in the unexpected. Old buildings, theater marquees, cobblestone streets, and anything incorporating rust are fascinating to me and bring untold joy. This joy marquee incorporates so much of what I'm drawn to, an old building, a weathered theater sign, and the unexpected. It speaks to something I deep. Never wondered what after joy can be found. Joy can be found anywhere, or it finds us when we least expect it. Uh, so this is Joy by um, Shelley Davis. There actually have been two response poems uh, already submitted and they're on the website um, for this piece. One by Patrick Hammer Jr. and one by Michelle DeSico. Okay, uh, Charles Dore. Yay. Charles, here you are, great. Let me bring you up. I can't find the pictures anymore, uh, Robert. How do I do? Okay, I can still talk though, God knows. Um, I have um, I have the first piece up, which is button up. Okay. All right, great. So um, welcome Charles. This is Charles Dorr um, and uh, he's gonna tell us about two pieces. The first piece button up is at the gallery here in Saugerties and then the second, uh, which is called In Focus is um, exclusive to Artsy. So take it okay. away, welcome. Uh, thank you, I'm thrilled to be be part of Emerge and thank you all. And I thought I should mention I have cancer too because everybody was mentioned it seems to be a thing going thing but it has nothing to do with my work. All right, Button Up started as uh, I am using a lot of my um, collection of family photographs. That's my sister and I and a friend Doreen. She um, claimed to have a button up her nose and we all didn't believe it. And sure enough, we got the flashlight and Doreen um, had a button up her nose. And we were aghast. We, cut, we told all the neighbors and everybody came running and we all somehow probably with a stick, I don't know, but a button, whenever I hear a button, I'm always thinking of Doreen Kelb and her dilemma there of my sister and I trying to get her button out of her nose, that piece became a button piece and then it changed kind of a carnival theme and that's how my work goes it starts with that little picture of the three of us and all of a sudden i'm dealing with carnival and coney island and growing up comically okay uh now do i talk about the other one robert yeah please talk about talk, let us okay. talk, know about the other one too in focus was based on that I've been for many parts of my life I've had three careers this art thing I've only been doing for two years again having revisited after 40 years as the pandemic again and um, in focus kind of just reminds me of my photographers I repped photographers for 25 years and had my own company and the idea there is them telling you exactly what they think it is and me telling them it's not marketable it's not you know don't tell me how great you are tell me why this picture is working or not working i went a, a lot of portfolio development and to me it's all about your focus and if you're the artist is telling you what it is it's not there on the paper so that i have this thing about being in focus or not in focus and that's how that started. Excellent. Thank you, Charles. Thank you. Great story about about the um, the button. Well, <laughs> my wife told me actually don't tell the button story because it's gross. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> but that button was orange, just like my picture, and it, I'll never forget it. And I, you know, it's one of those things, Doreen. I wonder how she's doing now. Um, but uh, years later, that's my story on that one. Great. Love it. Thank you for joining us. I really appreciate it. Thank you. It. My pleasure. I, I wish I could get the images up again. What am I doing wrong? I'll keep trying. Thank you, guys. Uh, on art? Yeah, they, they, they should just go and tell, under Tell Me a Story on Artsy. Um, and then just click on there. All right. I had it, and then it went away. Okay, thanks, guys. All right. Glad Take to care. be part of this show. Glad to be part of this show.
you want to coach? Uh, Arabella wants to say one thing. Just that I am in remission and doing well. Oh. <laughs> All right. Um, next, we are looking at. Oh, I see. Okay, wonderful. Um, this piece of white bread. Um, it's um, Estine is in uh, acrylic marker on paper on wood. Uh, actually, it's on masonite, I believe. Uh, it was created in 2021. It is, um, and this is this is what he has to say about about this piece. It's inspired by a children's book from the 70s that depicts scenes of life in New York. Here at the restaurant at Rockefeller Center. Uh, there's a second piece that is um, on artsy. Uh, this is 48 by 48 as well, acrylic marker and paper on masonite uh, from 2021. Uh, this is called Super Bubble, and uh, it is the layers of the American Super Bubble. Uh, our next piece is by um, uh, Bobby or Barbara um, Esmark. It is called uh, Pulse. Where are you, Barbie? Bobby, okay. Give me one second. She did, she did right. Oh, here we go. Uh, it is oil on canvas. It's um, from 2019. And this is one of a series of paintings in poetry in response to gun violence in America, specifically mass shootings. This piece is Pulse, the name of the club in Orlando, Florida, and images and, and imagines the evening prior to the shooting that took place on Latin night, November 11th, 2016, that killed 49 people. Uh, there is a uh, poem that the um, that the artist uh, wrote about this piece that is on the gallery website as well. This is actually uh, there's a there's a few pieces in this show that um, address gun violence um, in, in the United States. Uh, this these uh, this is by John Fulci. Uh, John is an artist in White Plains, New York. This is called The Call. It's oil on canvas, 36 by 30 from 2021. This is also by John Fulci. Uh, this is the uh, piece that's uh, exclusive to Artsy. This is called The Injury, oil on canvas, also from 2021, and this one is 26 by 32. A few pieces from Harriet Foreman Barrett. Uh, Harriet, uh, this is called Fertile Passages, or Fertile Passings, I'm sorry. Uh, Harriet lives in New Paltz. It's oil on canvas. It's 16 by 20, and this is from 2021. Yes. And the second piece is called uh, Generations of the Masks We Wear. Uh, this piece is uh, 17, uh, I'm sorry, 11 by 11. It's oil on canvas from 2019. Uh, Then I've got two pieces from uh, Deborah Friedkin. Uh, Deborah lives in Sleepy Hollow, New York. Uh, this is called uh, The Hobo Dreams Worlds. It's mixed media collage. It's 10 by 16 from 2018. And Deborah says a drunk hobo finds enlightenment on the rails and manifest worlds. Uh, this also has a response poem um, on, uh, on the website as well. Uh, Deborah's second piece. This is called The Big Bang. It's a mixed media collage, 12 by 14 from 2018, a peek inside the inner workings of the cosmos. This is a piece by uh, Deborah's, hus uh, Deborah's husband, uh, Jeffrey Friedkin. Uh, Jeffrey is a photographer in uh, Sleepy Hollow as well. Uh, this one is called Hung Out to Dry. It's a photograph that's printed on metal, 24 by 16, and it was created in 2017. This is Jeffrey's second piece that is um, exclusive to Artsy. This one is called Street Talk. Uh, this one is printed on metal as well. Uh, it's Village Vanguard right there. Okay, Andrea, are you here? I am here, Robert. 
say yeah. I say yeah. Great. Good. And I could people can take a break from looking at me. Uh, and I'm really pleased to have uh, two pieces by Andrea Geller. Um, and I've exhibited a number of Andrea's work um, in the gallery here. I've also got a couple shows of Andrea's that are exclusive on Artsy. Uh, one of them is a whole series of um, uh, oil paintings that depict preparation, um, um, the whole ritual of bathing, preparation, getting into the bath and, um, and after the bath. Um, she, she's got a wonderful series of uh, she worked on with um, recycled maps. Um, so have a look at Artsy, um, but let's now talk to Andrea about the two immersion pieces that um, that we've got in the show. So welcome, welcome, um, Andrea. Well, thank you so much for having me, Robert. Um, so yeah, these two pieces are a continuation of the pool series, which did follow the bath series. And water has been something that I have been connected to since childhood. Um, but so things is about the water that keeps me interested is, um, is similar to painting, particularly oil painting, because it brings me into a state of flow. And flow is defined as a state in which people are so involved in an activity that no, nothing else seems to matter. So when you leave the swimming pool, you actually are so refreshed and it's very transformative. But it also keeps me engaged because of the um, the light that reflects on the water and you know uh, through the motion of the water. Um, so it's always challenging. And so I just want to say that these two paintings were actually a self-portrait. I've never done a self-portrait of um, me in the water, but my husband and I started taking a weekend trip on our anniversary and I always look for a hotel with a pool. So that's what these are connected to about a year and a half ago. And um, it was interesting, you know, having myself as the subject because I've always taken um, you know, many family members to that pool experience. So thanks again for having me, Robert. It's always a pleasure to be part of these shows. Absolutely. It's always a pleasure to, to have you here. I, I'm, I'm a big fan of your work. All right. Um, oh. Thanks, Andrea. All right, next um, we have, and um, oh, this is, um, this is a fiber piece. Uh, this is by Denise Giardulo. Uh, Denise lives in Stonebridge, New York. Uh, this is called Moonlight Bay. It's mixed media fiber, 18 by 20, created in 2015. Um, this quilt was inspired by the song Moonlight Bay and traveled around the United States for three years in the Fly Me to the Moon exhibit. It was also photographed and is included in the book with the same name published by um, Schiffer. This is really stunning in person. All the de you can't really see it much in, on, um, on screen, but the details in this are really beautiful. Uh, the second piece is called Spring Walk. Uh, this is a um, collage. It's a small piece, eight by eight, 2015. A Spring Walk Memories of Childhood is what Denise has to say about this piece. Uh, Teresa Gooby. Teresa, I don't think you're here, are you? No. Uh, this piece actually sold in the gallery. Yes. Uh, okay. Uh, love the titles for, for uh, Teresa's work. Uh, ter Teresa is an artist in Beacon, New York. Uh, the title for this piece is, Mark said girls should have an earlier curfew than boys because they could be out getting pregnant late at night, but boys don't have that problem. Uh, this is a, a print on a book cover with encaustic and a toy gun. It's eight by 10 created in 2018. Uh, this is one in a series of women holding guns. Each title is long, but reveals the beginning of the narrative of feminism. And then this is the uh, second piece that, um, that is in the exhibit. Um, and this piece is called, Tammy and Susan were dismayed to be turned away from the hotel bar when they showed up without a male escort. 
Uh, Christine, are you here, Christine Graff? I don't think so. Uh, this is this is a, a really wonderful piece. This is um, it's in a box. Um, let me see if I can get some other angles from this too. Uh, this is called Lucinda through the years. Lucinda's face through the years. It's mixed media, seven by eight and two inches deep, created in two thousand. Where did the what did the I'm sorry? Where did the years do to her in Lucinda's life? What is the tangle of lines she lives in? The lines in her face is where the story is. Or does she wear a veil, a mantilla? Is she hiding? Is she mourning? Let the viewer decide. Okay. Uh, Susan Griffin. This is called uh, Smiley Sleeps. I don't, let me just double check. I don't think Susan is, um, is here with us. No. Uh, this piece is called Smiley Sleeps. Sorry, folks, I'm juggling a bunch. It's wax pastel, which I'm not too familiar with. It's, a, it's, it's an interesting medium. I'd like to learn more about it. Uh, it is 20 by 30. This was created in 2020 uh, or 20, 2007. Uh, we have two pieces here by Josefa Gutilius. Uh, Josefa is a uh, artist here in Saugerties, New York. This is called Prepped for Zoom. It's from her Inhabiting New Earth series. It's acrylic on canvas, 20 by 30. Uh, this one was created in 2021. There is a response poem uh, published for this piece uh, by Elizabeth Schaefer, Schaefer um, on, on the gallery website. This is Josepha's second piece called uh, Crimea River. And this is also acrylic on canvas, 20 by 16 from 2021. Uh, this piece here, this, this is um, Stevan Janis. Uh, Stevan is a new artist for, for, for the gallery. I, I, I haven't really exhibited his, his work before, but I would I'd certainly um, exhibit some more. Uh, Stevan lives in, in um, Red Hook, New York. This is called Jacuz. It's acrylic on paper, uh, 22 by 26, created in 2011 unsettling childhood imagery within an artist's landscape. My work often depends upon personal imagery or vocabulary to depict a narrative. Within the childlike and playful qualities of my paintings are ominous undertones, reflecting the light and dark side of life, isolation, vulnerability, yet humor, while irony and contradiction works its way through. Uh, this second piece um, by Stefan is called School days. Uh, it's 38 by 50, 2017 acrylic on canvas. It is my interpretation of childhood memories in the classroom. My work often depends upon personal imagery or vocabulary to depict a narrative. Within the childlike and playful qualities on it, of my paintings are ominous undertones reflecting the light and dark side of life. Um, isolation, vulnerability, yet humor. This is what I just read, I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. Um, these should, should certainly lead viewers to, um, to a narrative, I would think, you know, this alone, just the, um, uh, history in the United States and the whole idea of memories of, of schools. I certainly have plenty of those, um, that are bottled up waiting to come out in the form of words. Uh, Pam Krimsky. Uh, this is a really wonderful piece by Pam. Pam lives in Highland, New York. I don't think you're here, Pam, right? No. Um, it's called Late One Afternoon. It's acrylic on canvas, uh, 17 by 21 from 2021. This painting began as a drawing from a costume model session at Draw a couple of weeks ago. I like the feelings of the pose and use the same drawings as the basis of a monoprint. I like the idea enough to develop the subject as a painting. I like the subject because the pose itself, as it was, did tell a story. I placed a man's figure in the painting because I feel it answers the unsettling questions of posture of the young man. Veronica, I know Veronica. Hi, Hi Robert. Uh, let's see. Um, sorry, Veronica's just trying to find you. I'm here. <laughs> Hi. Oh, <yeah. laughs> Welcome. Um, I've got, uh, we have two pieces by uh, Veronica Lawler. 
uh, welcome Veronica and both pieces of sold. Um, I wanted to bring in a little bit of abstract work. There's not much abstract in the show, um, but uh, there was a, you know, a, a, a number of um, uh, some real abstract qualities to, um, to Veronica's work. And I thought it would really lead viewers to her narrative. Um, so please, Veronica, take it away. Let us know about it. Okay, thanks. Uh, thanks for having me, Robert. Um, yeah, so uh, I'm a native New Yorker, and my background is on site location drawing. So in the last few years, I've been going on site and drawing a lot of the old uh, industrial spaces around the Brooklyn and Queens waterfront. Um, and so this particular series started uh, with the 2017 demolition of the 1939 Kosciuszko Trust Bridge that connected the two boroughs. And I started drawing that demolition and I started to get interested um, in the idea of these old spaces. And so I go on site and I make these drawings and then I take them into the studio and use them as a point of departure into abstraction as a way to really talk about the collective energy and the memories that linger in these spaces, even after they're abandoned or demolished. And, um, you know, the abstraction works for me um, in these instances in the same way that a memory is not generally a complete picture, but more pieces and remnants of images that come together. And it's a very fluid process. Um, and so I like that idea as a way to talk about what lingers, you know, after the structure is gone. So the first piece, remnants, um, you see like broken elements of the truss bridge mixed with plant life that grows through and takes over an abandoned site. Um, and then of course the face uh, represents the human elements so, and all the memories and the lives that have moved through the space. Um, and the second piece is similar theme, uh, reclamation. Uh, this one is focused more on the native plants that assert themselves and grow through urban spaces with the passage of time. And so this reflects back to an even older memory um, of you know, the native land that existed before industrialization. And I, I find that the mixed media collages are a good way for me to explore these themes. Um, even the act of collaging itself, where you bring disparate elements together um, can enhance this idea of fragmentation of memory um, through the materiality of the piece itself. So those are my pieces. <laughs> and thanks for, thanks for including me in the exhibit, Robert, and having me here today. Really gorgeous. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, Veronica. Um, I have a, another special guest here at the gallery, uh, Ulf Lovin, who lives here in Saugerties. Uh, so Ulf stopped by to talk about his two pieces. You wanna you wanna stand next to the to the piece here? There you go. Great. Uh, so this is Ulf Lovin, and this is uh, this is Ulf's um, one of the pieces that Ulf has has in the show. Uh, so tell us about it, Ulf. Oh, title. This is um, an island, uh, Naxos, in uh, it's a Greek island mm -hmm. in the Aegean. And I, um, I used to live in Greece for maybe a decade and did, uh, you know, at least a thousand paintings down there. So I used to come out to this particular view here and I probably had about half a dozen paintings of the same view. And uh, while I'm painting, somehow I feel I'm treading on an ice that is a little bit thin, but has been trodden by human beings since time immemorial, <laughs> when we first can call ourselves human, you know. I mean, it's uh, <clears throat> probably about 100,000 years ago, people used to be conscious of that we have five fingers, uh, five toes. It's like a, a number when people start counting, I th I'm, probably they start with that because you can always count your fingers. Mm -hmm. And uh, they also started painting around that time, 100,000 or 80,000 years ago. Oh, some of them very beautiful, on, uh, usually on rocks, you know. Eventually they graduated to paint on canvas much later. And uh, still, we were still all human beings. And uh, the reasoning why you are painting still often has to do with numbers, you know, you uh, 
trying to get maybe, in my case, I have a repetition perhaps of five, one, two, three, four, five, you know, and uh, you can improvise on that, but it, it needs, it's part of the uh, elements that try to shore up a painting, make mm -hmm. it really respond, that people can respond to it, you know. Uh, if you have too many numbers, you know, <laughs> It's just confusion. What about, tell us about this piece here. Yeah. This is, this is the second piece that Wolf has here, the, uh, this here on the screen. Oh, uh -huh. this piece, Angry oh, Woman. Oh, oh, this yeah. is, this is, I, I know, I know Ulf's work, uh, mostly his abstract work and his landscape. So I was really pleased to see this, uh, oh. to see this piece. <laughs> uh, so tell us about this piece, Ulf. Yeah, it's more of a sketch, but um, uh, I liked it because uh, it, uh, it had a character to it. She, I call it an angry woman. And uh, it certainly I wanted to get a gleam in the eye then, looking for another way of attack. <laughs> right. <laughs> so uh, it's, it's a sketchy piece, but I still think it hangs together, even I left it oh, yeah. like that, you know. And what, what do you, um, you, do you find that you're moving a little more towards this direction or you're sort of, you use this as, you know, I don't just taking a little break from a little more towards what um, in sort of like a, uh, you know, almost like a figure direction. Uh, figurative. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, it's a little yeah. impressionistic. Though. Well, I'm there, so, but not too much. I think no. it's still quite abstract. Yeah, it, you is, know? Yeah. Uh, it happens to be a hand, but it's barely recognizable. Is it a right. four or how many fingers are there? Right, you right. Know, I don't want it. Uh, I want uh, the expression to dominate, you know, it's yeah. a gleam in the eye that uh, it's going to come out of the canvas and uh, hopefully. Yeah, I, 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 I think that, you know, whether you're doing landscapes, abstracts or portraits, it's always going to have the, a lot of the same kind of, you yeah. know, um, abstract elements in it. Great. All right, thanks. Excellent. Thank, Thank you all. Thank you so much. You got it. All right. Okay. Thank you all. All right. We have uh, Linda Linton. Linda um, is an artist in uh, Woodstock, New York. I wanted to, um, if I may, I wanted to pull up a, um, Sorry, folks, I'm just trying to pull up a document here. I want to read, um, since this is an art and word show, I wanted to read a quick little poem by Patrick Hammer Jr. that was created for uh, this piece by Linda Linton, which is called um, Five Cardinals. Four Cardinals, sorry, uh, Four Cardinals. We come four as one, perch on four limbs in one barren tree in the winter of all your lives. We come plumed in red, a sanguine remember of life as harbingers and a comfort to you all in light of those you are missing. In barren times, we know the lives and loves that left your heart dry and fallow, but there will come another season in bloom again. Uh, that is by uh, Patrick Hammer Jr. Um, he lives in New Jersey. He's a poet in New Jersey. Um, that is one of probably about a dozen response poems that I've received so far from um, from various people. So um, have a look, um, and also looking for some short stories too. So again, just to um, remind folks, this is a show that hopefully is connecting uh, the visual arts with the written word. Um, and I'm inviting writers to have a look at the show, um, either come into the gallery, or have a look on artsy.net and create a new work um, inspired by the art. Uh, it's published on the website. And then also we're gonna have a reading on November 7th for you to come and share your work. Um, all right, uh, so that was, or so we're up to Linda Linton. So this is Four Cardinals. Uh, it is ink, natural dyes. Um, on Stonehenge paper, and it's eight by eight from 2021. Um, the second piece that Linda has is um, called What's the Hurry or What's the Rush? 
natural uh, natural dyes, inks on Stonehenge paper. This is eight by eight also, 2021. And with both of these pieces, Linda says, the COVID winter of January, 2021 seemed to last forever. Even, even the flock of cardinals that overwinter in my yard every year seem to feel the tedium of it. Marjorie Maggot, Mar I don't think you're here Marjorie, are you? No. I really like this piece. I've seen this piece a couple times of Marjorie's um, when I've been visiting at her studio. I think it's a really, really charming piece. It's called Call, Call Me Opposing. It's all oil on canvas 24 by 18 from 2018. Um, and then Marjorie's second piece um, is called Two Heads on a Chair. Um, it's oil on canvas 2016 from 2017. And I think there's a, gotta be a story here. I mean, how do two heads wind up on a chair? Um, Dorothea, uh, Dorothea Marcus is here. Let me find Dorothea and here you are. Great, hey, Dorothea, how are you? I'm great, thank you. Welcome. Um, well, this photograph is called Man with Cross and it was taken in Cuba a couple of years ago. And my work is primarily abstract, but um, I was with a group of photographers and we were doing street photography. And what I love about this photo is how I was able to get the composition elements that I love, like wall color and shadow of wires and shadows, and also get this really human element. And um, it's been really interesting for me since I usually do abstract work to see how um, this, this photo has actually already inspired two different works, um, a poem by uh, Tony Francesi, and also Joan Ramis wrote a piece um, connecting my photo with another photo and an oil painting in the show. Um, and uh, I wanna read uh, Tony's poem in case people can't come next week. He'll be reading it next week. I'm sure much better. Uh, um, the week after actually. Oh, oh, it's the week after, right. Not Halloween, excuse me. Yeah, November 7th, right. Um, when the shadow bent and huddled to a darkened self stands midway to the door but hangs its unaccomplished crown. The legs that meant to walk stand cruciform and the head turns from the now closed way. Cross behind and cross above, the invitation lost. Who with knowledge would dare deny themselves transcendence? So um, anyway, and I've had other people react to this. It's very interesting, a friend of mine thought that the man looked like he had just stepped down off the cross <laughs> and that his, you know, his feet are, are crossed. And, and Joan did, Joan was more fascinated with the image of the door as kind of an optical illusion, because is it a door? Is it a window? Um, there's no steps. Um, I'm so curious, anyway, as yeah. a visual artist, how do you, how do you, um, how do you feel about people responding to your, to your art this way? Oh, it's very exciting. I mean, you know, I love it, you know, because you never know, you know, when you do art, you always have people, you know, responding and saying things, but for someone to write a poem or a story about it, you know, that's like a, you know, that that's an authentic reaction. You know, they're not just complimenting you or, you know, saying some art speak, but um, I love that it, it uh, prompted two different, two totally different stories. Yeah. Hopefully. Yeah. So thank you for doing this. Oh, absolutely. Like I said, this is, this yeah. is you know, one of my favorite shows uh, out from the year. All right, great. Thank you, Dr. It's always a pleasure to see you. Likewise. All right. Um, Kate Masters. Uh, I don't have many landscapes in the show, uh, but I did want to bring in a few. Uh, this is by Kate Masters. Kate lives in, um, here in Saugerties. Uh, this is called Winterfield. It's a watercolor, 15 by 20, and it's from 2020. Uh, I have two pieces from Ellen Menzies. Ellen, another artist that lives here in Saugerties. Uh, this is called Swim with Wolf. It's oil on paper, 14 by 16. And then the second piece, which is in the same series, is called Ride Redo. Um, oil on paper, 15 by 19. We have some guests. 
Uh, okay, so this is what Ellen has to say about the series. This painting is connected, or both paintings, is connected to an ongoing series that represents a revision of the classic tale of Red Riding Hood. In my version, Wolf is a hero who rescues the orphaned Red Riding Hood and takes her to live with and be protected by him in the forest. So I challenge someone to finish writing that, please. Okay, these are both by Ellen Menzies. This is the second piece ride we do. And now we have a small sculptural piece by uh, Dennis Moore. This is called The Emergence of Hope. It's four by eight, uh, 2021. All right, let me, I need to switch my screens here. All right, no, just not that one. Sorry, folks, just give me one second here. Okay, great. Okay. So this is, uh, this is a piece from uh, Ingrid Nichter. Uh, this piece sold, uh, it's called Baggage. It's mixed media on canvas. It's 24 by 12. The second piece by uh, Ingrid is called She Looks Like You. This is uh, also mixed media, uh, 12 by 12. This was created in 2020. We have uh, two photographs by uh, Will Nixon. Will's an artist in Kingston. Is it Kingston, Will, or Woodstock? Kingston, yes. Uh, this is called Big Head. It's digital photography. It's printed uh, to 12 by nine and it's from this year. And then this one is called Party Time. Uh, this is uh, digital photography as well. Uh, Jacqueline Oster, uh, this is called Fish Fair, Fair Fish. Uh, Jacqueline, you're here, right? I am here, yes, hi. Oh, I see you with the green scarf? Yes. Excellent, great, welcome. Let me pull you up and uh, welcome. I'm really pleased to have this piece here. Actually, there was just someone in uh, not even a half hour before we started this broadcast that was looking um, at that piece and was commenting on it. Oh, right. Um, well, first of all, thank you for um, supporting my work and for having this piece in the show. Uh, I am a graphic designer of over 35 years freelance, uh, art director, et cetera, et cetera. And during COVID, when work slowed down, I revisited my love of uh, illustration. And so I've been turning out these watercolors and having a wonderful time and it's all been so exciting. And uh, this particular piece is um, watercolor, it's nine by 12. And you know, Matisse drew, painted all these goldfish with this feeling that, um, that this was, uh, he wanted to convey the feeling of serenity. Whereas this, this fish is um, the complete opposite. It's, uh, it's a fish at a fair, which always upset me as a child that these fish were given away as prizes and they were so traumatized. And so um, that's what I tried to convey in this, in this piece. The, the water is turbulent, his expression, he looks horrified. And it, it so happens that they still do this, give fish away at fairs. In a few states in the U.S., it's, been, um, it's become illegal, I think, in Massachusetts and um, a few other states, I think, South Carolina, Iowa. But in New York, it's still, you can still do this, give live animals like this away at fair. So um, hopefully that will stop someday. And, um, and that's, that's about it, so. It's a really wonderful piece. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jacqueline. Yeah. Uh, Hopefully, um, yeah, I, I felt the same with what, when I saw this um, and then, you know, saw the title of it. Um, I've always felt the same about the, the fair fish as well um, and uh, never tried to win them. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. It was always upsetting to me as a child that that, that, it, that happened, so. I, I definitely connected to this. Thank you, Jacqueline. Yes, thank you. 
All right, Michael, is Michael Palladino here? I know Michael, you had emailed me, said you might make it. No, okay. Uh, there are two pieces by Michael Palladino. Uh, this is called Snail and Ginkgo Leaves. It's a cast relief with acrylic paint. It's seven and a quarter by seven and a quarter. And then the second one is called Snake and Eggs. Uh, this is it, the same cast relief with acrylic, uh, seven by, and a quarter by seven and a quarter. Uh, what um, Michael has to say about these is these small reliefs explore odd fictional narratives in nature. A locust mounting, devouring a butterfly in a bed of mistletoe, a dead snake wrapped around bird eggs with scattered feathers, a cocoon hanging on a thorny rose crucifix, and a snail moving over fallen ginkgo leaves, a patient traveler over life's journey. Uh, so these are two from a series of um, Michael's uh, reliefs. And Michael is in New Jersey, I believe. Michael, um, yes. Susan Phillips, this I found really striking. Um, and the title is called Night Terror. Um, it is a photograph. It's framed to 11 by 14. It's from 2020. And this is from a series of night photography that Susan uh, was doing. Susan splits her time between Socrates and New York City. Uh, this is the second. Uh, this is called um, Trucker's Dream. It's from a series of dreamlike images. Terry Priestner. Terry, are you here? No. Okay. Uh, there was a response poem um, sent in for this piece as well. As I mentioned, there was only, uh, I think, two or three, three landscapes that I took in. Uh, this is called Hope Summer Fields. It's oil on linen. It's 16 by 19 from 2021. The painting was started in 2020. I had finished three paintings that I was not happy with. Between COVID, not being able to see family and friends, and the anger that was everywhere in our country, I was very down. Art seemed to be taking a back seat. After having a pity party, I sat down and painted what I love in the landscape around me. Beautiful fields, wild flowers hidden in the tall grass, and scrub pines and cedars that pop up. I felt hopeful again. One person told me it looks like farmland in Utah. Another friend said it reminded her of vacations in Lake Placid as a child. I am pleased it brought back happy memories for, the, for these people. After a few changes, I completed it this year. Uh, so this is Hope Summer Fields by Terry Priesner. And this is a second one called um, Faith King Hill. Um, I've passed this hill near my house almost every day. I always thought of it as pretty, wondering what it would look like, what it would be like to climb it and what is at the top. Sometimes life's hills can be daunting. We need to have faith to move forward. I've tried to capture sunshine and simple beauty in nature if we take the time to look. Um, Stacy, these are, I'm really, really pleased as I had said earlier um, that I'm, we have a collection of um, some really whimsical characters um, in the window uh, here at the gallery. Um, oh, Stacy, I'm sorry, I just muted you. I'm, I'm really pleased to, uh, to have Stacy Pritchard here. I know Stacy from uh, my days working back in, in Red Bank, New Jersey. Um, and I'm really, really pleased um, that she accepted my invitation to, um, to exhibit some of the works. Um, in, in the gallery window. And um, I'm real pleased to um, present uh, her work to uh, folks here in the Hudson Valley. So I'll stop babbling. Stacy, please. <laughs> Thank you so much, Robert. Um, my first question, because I have more than one piece um, in there, of course, is how much time do I have? <laughs> I muted you again. I'm sorry, I went to mute myself. Oh, there you go. Uh, I'll mute myself. Um, you could, you know, we're looking at four images that I have here. We've got this. Um, okay. uh, oh, two of the JoJo's. Yeah, okay, the good. Jojo. All right, go, go. Go back to this. This is actually one of the first JoJo's that I completed. I've done about four, four or five versions of this character now. Um, 
I'm doing these in clay. So when I say I've done about four or five versions, sometimes that means that only three of them make it to the end. Um, but she was the first one. She is uh, a wonderful character and she's an archetype actually for the tarot card, the, the divine fool. My work um, in this series, I kind of loosely call them the tribe, um, is really inspired by a lot of uh, mythology and history and amorphism that is found in folklores and things like this. I think for like five years, I've been reading the original Grimm Brothers uh, fairy tales, which of course are much darker and deeper than what we, uh, the disney version that we have today. And so they're inspired from a lot of different areas, but Jojo is one of the characters that's really endured. I, I really love her and she's, she's very into throwing herself at the world and uh, it's appropriate, she's a dancer. This is her latest version um, that I literally finished about a week or two ago. Um, I really struggled with the base on this one, I have to say, because a lot of times I picture, I see these uh, figures in my head before I know how they're going to really exist in the world. And, and, I, and I find their gesture and it's about finding a way to express it. And so here Jojo is swimming and uh, she has a nice uh, uh, lace in her um, tutu to emphasize her movement and uh, through the world, her trust in the world. Oh. This piece has taken forever to complete, um, but I, I finally did. This is a Mrs. Cowpants, Queen P. And she is, I'm sure I'm butchering the way to say it in Greek, uh, a Queen Pasiphae, who was King Minos's wife. And if you recall in the myth, um, she's actually a goddess in her own right, if you look at her pedigree. But uh, she's, she's uh, a one, she kind of belongs to um, uh, the Poseidon. And she gets cursed because Minos doesn't give up the cow, right? And so she is cursed to fa fall in love with this sacred cow. And she has Daedalus make her a cow suit so that she can have sex with this cow. And that is how the Minotaur is conceived. And the story, when I look at it, it's such a strange comment on female sexuality. Um, it's amazing to me. Um, and so I created this piece and I just love her. <laughs> I don't know what else to say about it. Wonderful. And then there's uh, the lookout, as I think. This one is a very, as much smaller than the others. Uh, this one is kind of a cow figure, or I'm sorry, not a cow figure, a dog figure. And I think it's really kind of evolved into this figure behind me. Um, the, it's, it's a little more adolescent. Uh, in, in its kind of uh, outlook, I kind of think of these figures as I start them. I, I kind of see the figure and I build them. And then almost like a, in a literary sense, I start to fill out who they are as I start to explore them. And so in that way, this, this work is very different some, from some of the other work that I, that I do and that it, it tends to be very exploratory. And I'm so pleased that Robert asked me to do the window for this particular exhibit because I've always loved to trade back and forth between reading, I'm a ferocious reader, and, and, and uh, creating artwork. And there's often words in my artwork and I've collaborated with writers before. And so I'm just so pleased to put my work in here. Um, and it really was only about, I would say about four years ago that I really started 
thinking of my work, not just as figurative, which it's always been, but as narrative um, and understanding that it was more than just about the figure, that it was about creating stories. Um, so I'm really pleased to have them here. I was really, really pleased to have them in the window. They, they look fantastic and, you know, people are, are um, really drawn to them. And there definitely are stories here somewhere because um, they certainly are, <laughs> are some characters. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Stacy. Please come, come by and uh, check them out. Um, they're really, really wonderful. Uh, Stacy has some, some fantastic work. Uh, she, I think there's a few other pieces of hers as, as well on, um, on RT. Mm -hmm. uh, running a little ahead of, ahead of time. Um, I did see that Terry, uh, you, I think joined us recently. Um, do you want to talk a little, let me go back to, to your pieces. If you want to, um, talk a little bit about them. Um, I had presented sure. them already. Um, but, um, like I said, I was, it was a little, I'm a little ahead of time. So, um, I think we'd probably rather hear from, from you about them than me. Um, so take it away, Terry. This is, this is um, Hope Summerfields. Hi, um, this is a painting I did. I started it, oh, right, maybe a year or so ago. Um, I had, we all come through the winter. We've been on lockdown. We hadn't been seeing our family. The politics in the country was really nasty. Um, I was really down in the dumps. Uh, I'd been working on my paintings all winter and I was hitting kind of a dry spot, I think. And after having a pity party for a few days, I just sat down and I said, you need to paint. That's what makes you happy. And I paint the things I love. Um, I, every summer I love where I live. Um, there's these beautiful flowers in the fields. I live in an area where um, it used to be a lot of farmland. Uh, those are no longer working farms, but there's these little scrub pines going on. And I get to see the Catskill Mountains in the background. So I painted this painting and I fiddled with it, the sky and the mountains for another year. But um, I, it's a happy painting and I, it gave me hope when I finished it, that things are gonna get better that um, you need to do what you need to do and um, do what you love. And so they say when you paint from the heart that um, it shows through your work. It's a, it's a really beautiful piece. I mean, it brings you know, me personally you. a real peaceful place. And knowing that it's, you know, it started through, I guess, the anxiety of COVID um, and brought, you know, brought you to this place, it makes it even, um, you know, more special, more beautiful. Well, I think it, it has kind of a universal theme. When I posted it, uh, a friend in Utah said, oh, that looks like where I live. And then another one, woman said to me, it reminds me of when I went to Lake Placid as a child. Yeah. And so yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> I guess it, it yeah. speaks to everybody in a way. Yeah, that's, that's what art's about. Mm -hmm. I'm glad I caught you. Thank you so much, Mary. I appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Thanks of Abraham. Yeah. Oh, Nanette. Okay, this is this is the second piece that um, is addressing um, gun violence. Oh, here you are. Hi, Nanette. How are you? Hi. Well, uh, I think you're on mute. So you'd need to unmute. There you go. Oh, yeah. Am I unmuted now? Yep, you're good. Okay, great. You're welcome. Uh, this, this. Hi, hi everyone. <laughs> I, uh, it's so, it's um, kind of daunting to follow Stacy's whimsical characters and Terry's idyllic um, landscapes because this piece in particular. Um, I created in 2020 for an exhibition I was involved with about uh, gun violence. Um, and when I was conceiving this piece, I had uh, 
I had a very specific image in mind from my childhood because I, I grew up in uh, war-torn countries. And I kept coming back to the image of bullets riddling, you know, uh, the buildings around me. And I couldn't get it out of my head. So this is how this particular piece was conceived. Um, and it, it was probably a really good thing for me to be working on during COVID because it was very physical, you know, carving. I literally carved it and had to drill through holes and whatnot. So it, it, it you know, it kept me, it, it kept me going. It kept me going. Um, but I wanted to be very, I wanted it to be a visceral experience for people when they looked at it, um, to, to, to feel how, you know, bullets tear through things and how it's, it's tearing our society apart. It's, it's tearing lives apart. It's, it's tearing our country apart. And, um, I, I, I really hope that that comes through with this piece. Yeah. I had a question. I, I wanted to bring up a couple more different views. I had a question about uh, this, Danette. A lot of people, when they look closer, are seeing that um, some of the map is, uh, or the mapping is from uh, the Carolinas. Um, was that in? Or I think, I think you had told me that it's a sort of a, a, a collage of all different areas. Is that right? It is different. It is different maps it is different maps of the United States that I have in my collection I have a lot of maps and I wanted it to be very specifically about the United States um, I don't to be honest I don't remember if I specifically chose you know this area versus it was more the visual um, you know for instance on the right side down near the I, I really love the way the the um, the rivers went and the roads, it just gave this kind of drama. It was almost like I used it like an abstract, you know, movement to create the, the surface. Over here, it's um, almost like a sunburst, the way that the, that the rivers are. Right, exactly. Yeah. So, it's, it's, um, it's yeah, I, I, it's really a mishmash. The Carolinas are in there. I know New Jersey's in there. I know I think we lost your we lost your audio, Nanette. Quite a few maps. Oh, there you go. Okay. Um, and then there's a second piece also. In play. You want to you want to talk about the second piece? Yeah. Um, um, here we go. The second piece is called "When the Sea Rises." Yeah. And uh, this piece is more really how I start to work. I start to work like I'm going to start a collage, and um, I. My process is usually I find things and through the finding, I sort of know how I'm going to, you know, make my picture or make my diagram or whatever it tends to be. Um, in this particular pay, case, I had, I've been doing a lot of reading about, um, you know, what's happening to our world ecologically and it's been on my mind. I can't get it. it it's, it's cropping up in a lot of my pieces. Um, and this is, you know, if you, the very bottom is, is a, a landscape of, of um, New York in particular, but I'm just thinking any, any town, any city that's along a sea edge is pretty soon going to be underwater. And this is, this is how this concept came about. And again, there are maps in this as well. Um, I, use, I use maps a lot. <laughs> So the, the blue of the sea is different oceans and whatnot. So it, it, they're they're really stunning and and uh, I mean really powerful pieces. And I think that's that's you know what what art can really do is make people step back and um, look at issues in a in a sort of different way and and really um, analyze things through a visual a visual sense. So I I think these are you know I hope so. I, I I'm finding myself more and more. Um, drawn into the dialogue about um, what's going on in our world right now. 
and it's it's definitely crept into my art and I really hope that it makes people think. Yeah. Well, thank you. I'm, I'm really pleased to have them here at the gallery. I hope to, hope to be uh, seeing you again soon. Thank you. And thanks for joining us. Sure. Okay. Uh, Tad Richards. Tad, I saw you here. Are you still here? No, maybe not. You must have left, Tad. Okay. Um, there are two pieces by uh, Tad Richards. Uh, this one is called I Know Why You Have Come, which is a great opening line uh, for someone to, to jump on. Uh, Tad lives here in uh, Saugerties, uh, or Kingston, I'm sorry. Uh, this is a di digital painting, and the second is a digital painting as well. Um, they're both 11 by 14. Uh, this is the first one, I Know Why You Have Come. And then the second is called Terrific Value. Uh, Marilyn Rowley. Um, Marilyn is uh, an artist in Saugerties. Uh, this is called One with Nature. It's pastel ink and acrylic. It's 12 by 15, 20 by 21. I am consumed by the beauty of nature, which is the only thing that keeps me going, truly. This, um, I'm, there's a second piece of Marilyn's in the show. This one here is called Uproar. Uh, Marilyn works in collage and she, you know, I'm, I'm really used to mostly her, her bird work. So the, the raven, um, I think it's a raven. Uh, this piece here is uh, very representative of what she, um, you know, the work that I know of hers. This is not, however. Um, and uh, when I saw this come in, I was, I was pretty shocked that this was from Marilyn. Um, so I was immediately drawn to it. Um, there's something I, you know, just so beautiful about this, but yet something a little off. Um, not sure what. I think it might be the arm here that, that it, it's just connected odd. Um, don't know, but that's just my, my interpretation of it. So these, these are wonderful pieces by Marilyn Mack. Uh, two pieces by Rita Sherry. Uh, this is called Come With Me. It's mixed media 24 by 20. This is from 2018. And this was inspired by a Diane Arbus photograph. Uh, there is a series of um, uh, photographs that Diane Arbus uh, or Diane Arbus had taken um, just before she had passed away. And she had spent some time um, at an institution um, getting to know um, the clients there and um, photographing them. And this, is, this was inspired by one of those photographs. Uh, this second one is called Chicago Playground, 1968. It's mixed media, 20 by 20. This painting was inspired by a photograph I took when I lived in Hyde Park in Chicago. Uh, I have a very pleased to have another piece by Margaret Still um, in the gallery. This is, um, Margaret lives here in Saugerties, New York. Um, this is called Motel with Blue Sign. It's oil on paper, uh, 14 by 18, and this is 20 by 21. I thought that this would really lend itself to some kind of um, noir kind of story. Um, it reminds me of a, of a film noir um, opening of a, of, a, of a film or something. Um, so I thought maybe uh, something, something crazy is going on inside that motel. Uh, so tell us what it is. Um, this is a, uh, a sculptural piece by uh, Lou Story. Um, I was really pleased uh, to, to get this from Lou. Lou lives in Red Bank, and I know Lou, uh, again, from when I had to ran the gallery down in Red Bank. Um, his two pieces, this is called Strike Out, and then the second piece is called Joke Depository. Uh, we'll take a, take a look at Strike Out first. Um, this is cast vinyl, acrylic, paint, brass hinges. It opens to 10 by 12, and it was created in 2019. This is part of his uh, Portal series. The Portal series, like the Kawad series, which the second piece is from, takes its shape from Judeo-Christian altarpieces. This one, Strike Out, looks at war. This is the one that's hanging in the gallery. And then the doors close. This is it, this is it opened. 
Uh, this is the second piece. This is called Joke Depository uh, 2019 as well. Uh, this work is from the Kawad series, a form of st storytelling in Northern India, also called a traveling temple. I use this format to tell my own stories. This piece chronicles humor, which makes me laugh. I have two pieces by Cindy Sumerano. Uh, this piece is called uh, Trophy. It's acrylic on canvas, 28 by 40, created in 2021. Cindy lives in Hurley, New York. Uh, this piece actually is looking at me right across the desk and um, I'm hoping to write something uh, about this guy. There's something um, that's drawing me to it. And I don't think I'm the only one. Oh, this is a fun piece. Uh, this is also by Cindy Sumerano. Uh, this is called Neighborhood Watch. It's uh, 30 by 40. And I think we probably all know um, a Neighborhood Watch like this. Nancy DeFlon, I'm really pleased to uh, have Nancy back. Um, Nancy, let's bring you up. Uh, this is a really, really wonderful piece. Um, uh, called it's, Robert, it's called Hanging In There. You have the Hanging Tree, which is a totally hanging different concept, but the real, the real title of it is Hanging In There. Hanging In There. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, and there, there's a response poem uh, to this on, online as well. Uh, oh. so, um, Maria DeSico, uh, uh, Michelle DeSico um, had responded to this. That's so. great. So uh, welcome, Nancy. Uh, welcome back. Tell us, tell us about this piece. This is a tree that uh, probably my favorite tree in the whole world. I visit it quite a lot. It's near a lake. Well, it used to be near a lake. That's part of the story. Um, uh, just west of Woodstock. It's one of my favorite places for walking. And so I walk along there, always have some kind of a camera, even if it's only the iPhone. And um, sometimes I'm looking for some specific kind of a thing I want to photograph there. Sometimes I'm just open to whatever comes along. And one of the kind of specific thematic things that I used to look for were trees that express the idea of Psalm number one, um, which describes the righteous person as a, a, a tree planted by running water. Unfortunately now, because of, well, because of drought, but now particularly because of construction that's going along there, because this is really a reservoir. And so it has to do something to do with the dam the water has kind of shrunken and um, it's not as close to the trees as it used to be. And so um, it, they really more express the theme of high and dry right now. Um, and every time I go back there, I would think, I wonder whether it's fallen down. I wonder whether it's fallen down. And then I, I think this was before yesterday, I think this was the last time I was there. It shows you how frequently I go, I go there a lot. And um, it's still there, it's, and it's hanging in there. And I realized why, the root system. The root system is absolutely amazing. And um, I actually got to the point of documenting and photographs to just the root system itself, just to show, and it, it spreads out. And in fact, it's actually connected with some of the trees around it. It's like, I went there and I said, hey, you guys are all brothers and sisters. You've all got this. The, the same roots, and so it's 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 absolutely amazing. So it's it, it's I, I think it's a beautiful tree, and just this resilience that just stays there. I went yesterday because I thought, well, I try to get it in just about all seasons, and I think I had a decent picture of it in fall foliage, such as you can call fall foliage this year. But yesterday I got, I got some more pictures with the the fall foliage, so um, <laughs> maybe you'll get that in the show one day too. I don't know. But thanks for taking this because I, I just love photographing this tree. Yeah, it's, it's a beautiful photograph. I think that you know the lines in it too are, are you know that are created. Um, yeah, really stunning. It works. Re it works really well. And I, and it's and I think that you know it would lead someone to um, somewhere, uh, which obviously it did, um, and hopefully hopefully it will with with more. Uh, writers as well. Thank you, Nancy. Thank you, Robert. Uh, Pam Tucker, is Pam here? Yes, yes, I am. Great, I thought you were here. Yes. Wanna... Welcome. Uh, 
Uh, this is Pam Tucker, and Pam, this is called uh, Summer 2020. Mm -hmm. uh, so please tell us, tell us a little bit about this, this piece here. Okay, well, this piece was done um, during summer 2020. Um, I had just been to a show at the Metropolitan Museum, the Goya show. Uh, he was an artist who documented a lot of violence during his life, the early 1800s. And um, this is, it's one of a series of ink drawings I made that summer um, based on all the events that were, were taking place. All the, there were so many protests about uh, racial violence and police violence. So this, is, this um, drawing depicts the event um, surrounding Dante Wright's death when a police officer thought she was using her taser and actually she was using her gun and it fatally, it fatally wounded him. Um, and my thought in presenting this piece to tell me a story is that it might inspire some writers to memorialize this event. Uh, yes, and, and it, again, I think it, it the, these are these are issues um, the issues here with with um, you know inequality with um, with with police violence with gun violence um, with uh, you know the environment. All of these issues are this is our reality right now, and I think that people um, mm -hmm. are processing it through uh, through the arts, uh, through visual arts, and then also it's it's a it's a wonderful vehicle to um, sort of process those emotions and thoughts too through the written word. Um, so I'm hoping that with, with all of the work, but especially with the, um, the pieces um, in particular that really address um, some, kind of, um, so, some kind of issues, so social issues, um, you know, uh, people really respond to that, so. Well, yeah, Robert, that was exactly my thought too. Um, yeah. You know, during that summer, we were all in lockdown and waiting to hear from Cuomo about COVID and, Things were in a way were happening in slow motion, and we had more time to um, to think about and what was going on. So now, what fifteen months later, um, it might be a time to you know continue processing and and creating more um, more pieces about those events. Yeah, and processing it in a healthy way too. You know, and I think really art is a is a great way to to, to process those feelings and, and ideas. Yeah. Well. So I'm, thanks for including this. Absolutely, it's, it's, a, it's a really stunning piece. Uh, thank you so much, Pam. Okay. Uh, we have a second fiber piece in the show. This is uh, from Kay Bellis Turan. This is called Joe's Coffee. Um, let me, hold on one second. Um, it's 25 by 20 by 29. Um, and she lives in Earlton, New York. Two people alone. Who do they talk to alone? Will they see each other? Uh, Claudia Warwick, I'm going to, Claudia, you're here and I am going to turn around and we're gonna look at this piece in person since it's right here. <laughs> i um, really pleased to have a piece by uh, Claudia Warwick in, in, in the, the gallery. This is um, one of uh, three pieces. Uh, the, the second piece, which this is past that we're looking at now. The second piece, which was present, um, I had uh, the pleasure of exhibiting in the gallery window um, during the winter of 2020, I believe. Um, so Claudia, I'm gonna bring you up. And um, oh, here you are. You're you're muted. If you want to unmute, I don't know if you want to um, to bring your camera up to, or if you're there. No. Okay. Um, well, I see that uh, I see her. I see Claudia there. She may have stepped away. Um, but as I was saying, this is um, this is one of three pieces. Uh, so this is the past, there was the present, which was the white kimono, um, and then there's the future, which is a black and gray kimono. Uh, it's made out of paper and it's silk screened. Uh, we'll, get a, we'll get a look in here. Um, so what Claudia, what Claudia did was, let me find, here we go. Um, so there are some descriptive words here. 
Uh, Claudia had, since this is the past, she had taken a, a few dates that are um, uh, important to her. And then there's a few descriptive uh, words underneath, uh, you know, to follow and describe that time period in the life. The whole narrative is a probably about this long. And then this whole text block is repeated um, throughout the kimono to create a sort of pattern. Um, so I'll, I'll do a, a walk around. Uh, there is text all on the back as well. Um, I'm thinking that perhaps someone can uh, maybe do a found poem or a found piece on here you, by using uh, some of the text that's actually um, in the piece uh, to get inspired and create a, uh, a written response to this. Um, and this is the full length. It, it looks wonderful hanging in the gallery here, right in the middle of the floor. Um, and let me see, Claudia, are you, are you back? I don't think so. Okay. Uh, we're going to go, we're going to move on to our last piece. Uh, these are two photographs by uh, J.D. Weiss. Uh, J.D. is um, a photographer here in Woodstock. Uh, J.D. uses traditional two and a quarter uh, camera. Uh, which she uh, processes in her own home um, and uh, prints each one individually. So each one is a, um, she, she composes the pieces together individually um, as she prints them. Uh, this one is called Beware the Sandal Shop. It is 21 by 21. As I said, it's a medium format film. It's archival print on panel and it's from 2021. And then the uh, second piece is called A Visit with Grandfather, also 21 by 20. Um, so that is the all of the art and tell me a story. Uh, again, you can, you can find the work um, on uh, Emerge Gallery uh, New York artsy page. There are 50 pieces hanging in the gallery and then an additional 30 on artsy. Uh, you can view it in two different ways. You can um, have each image up this way and click on each image to view each, or you can um, have a look through the uh, viewing room, which will give you all of the works, the text, and the multiple views of each piece uh, right there, right up front. Um, also want to uh, just go over real quick what the show is about. Um, it is Tell Me a Story. It's all very narrative work. So I am inviting writers to come on into the gallery or have a look at the work on Artsy. Uh, connect with a piece or two or however many you'd like. There's no limit. Um, well, I don't want it. I don't want, you know, two dozen pieces, but um, I'll take them. Sure. Why not? Uh, so, uh, yeah. Um, Connect with a piece, uh, get inspired, uh, write a new uh, new piece of uh, written word, whether it be a poem, a personal essay, a short story, um, even a critique, uh, if you'd like. Um, and um, each piece will be uh, exhibited or, or posted um, on the EmergeGalleryNY.com website. There's a, a little over a dozen that are available right now up there to read. Um, and I do post them as they come in. Um, and then on November 7th, uh, please join us again uh, live on YouTube, on the Emerge Gallery NY YouTube page. And we are going to um, give an opportunity for writers to come and read what they had written in response to the poems. So if you are a writer and you do want to respond, you can, um, there's information on the gallery website, on this site here on Artsy as well. Um, Basically, I'm just asking that you email me your, um, your written words with permission to publish them. And then I will give you um, information about joining the event on the 7th. Um, we'll be doing it through Zoom and it will go live on YouTube, just like we're doing right now. Um, have a look at the artsy.net page. There is the current show. There's previous shows. There are some online exclusives. Um, including some solo shows of some of the artists that we um, that are in this show. Um, and it, all of the shows have been archived for the last two years or so. Um, in many cases, a lot of the work is still available. Um, so um, yeah, have a look. Um, okay, uh, I think that's about it. Um, again, and oh, it, 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 we've been doing this since COVID. COVID has sort of 
uh, transform the way that uh, I've been doing things. I'm, I'm, I'm a little hesitant about having, having public openings right now since um, it is such a small space. So I started doing these virtual artist discussions and people are really responding to them and really, really, you know, enjoying them. Great way to find out more about the work directly from the artist. Uh, so uh, I have a, a handful of shows that are archived on YouTube as well. So um, if you want to have a look and you, you continue want to see me talk, uh, then please, there's plenty of them that you can watch on YouTube. Uh, thanks again, everybody. Please come into the gallery. Um, say hi. Have Spend as much time as you want in here. Uh, there's been a couple people that have been back a few times now, so, and I can, I can see the light bulbs going off in their heads. So I'm hoping to get some submissions uh, soon. Um, all of the work is available for sale. It's really affordably priced, um, and it would look great in your home. Um, so please uh, come visit. Uh, thanks to everyone for joining us. Uh, thanks to everyone for, um, for supporting the gallery all this time. Um, it's, it really means the world to me. Um, and um, yeah, uh, happy writing and um, we'll see everybody soon. Thank you all. Thank you, Robert. Thank you. Got it. Take care, everybody. Thank you. Bye-bye.